How do you go from this to this and still keep performance? Stick around for this Vermintide 2 settings tutorial to find out. The very first thing you want to do before you even start the game is in your launcher here, you want to go up to the settings uh, tab at the top, click it. You want to check your worker threads down at the bottom. Now this, depending on your CPU, is going to be how many threads are going to dedicate to Vermintide 2. Now you want this about one or two below the maximum. You don't want it at the max, as you see it kind of turns red there, that's, that's dangerous. It can actually affect performance negatively. So as you see, I have 14 total, so I keep mine at 13 and it works really well for me. Go ahead and accept and now you can start the game. So as you guys can see right now, my game doesn't look that amazing. I have pretty much everything turned down. So let's see what we can do about this. The first thing I want you guys to do is push escape, go to your options here and under gameplay, just a couple of changes, head bobbing, switch that to off, camera shake, camera shake, camera shake, <laughs> switch that to off. Player outlines, you're going to want this to always on. This is going to help you see your team through walls and stuff. Uh, it's very helpful. Blood and gore and screen blood effects, I turn those to off. I find that they kind of hamper my vision. Um, not, not really that they affect performance hugely. They just kind of get in the way for me. And then I keep dismemberment and ragdolls on. And that's all you need to mess with in the gameplay uh, section here. Next we're going to go up to video and this is where the fun begins. Personally I prefer to play in full screen as this kind of dedicates your computer to running uh, the program you know fully instead of having it like in a windowed mode or something you might have other stuff running in the background. My resolution pretty standard 1080p and uh, field of view is up to you personally. Whatever you think looks good. I think 95 looks good, so that's why I run it. VSync will leave that off for now. Personally, I'm trying to run at 90 frames a second, so that's what I have it to. And then max stacking frames down here, you want to put that to 1, as that will give you a bit of a more unstable frame rate, but less input latency, which will help you play the game better. Now, just for a reference point, guys, my GPU is a 2060 Super. And my processor is a AMD Ryzen 3700X. So not a terrible system, not a super duper high end system, just kind of somewhere in the middle, I would say. So let's mess around here. Character and texture quality. In the intro, you saw these, these were at the very lowest settings. Go ahead and switch these to high. I've already done it because it causes the game to restart when you do it. And I didn't want to have to go through all that. This will sharpen up the textures on your character and the world itself without using a ton of resources from your computer. So go ahead, put those to high for both of them. Shouldn't be an issue. Next in the particles section, we want to look at particle quality. The lowest you want to have particle quality at is medium. Now medium will let you see effects like the lightning in chaos wastes, um, the kind of circle on the ground when a blight stormer makes his storm just lets you see little things like that. So it, it takes a bit of performance and if you have a really toaster setup, yeah, I guess you could switch it all the way down, but it can hurt you in a game. Transparency resolution down here, as you can see, medium GPU impact. I find this uh, setting to be completely unnecessary, um, so I just put it to low. What it does is it uh, makes things behind like fire effects uh, a little bit more visible, but you don't really need that in my opinion. Scatter density has a pretty low impact on your computer and it affects uh, like how much grass and how much plants there are on the ground for most maps. I usually keep that right around 50%. I don't need it all the way up, but a little bit of grass here and there I'm fine with. Blood decal amount, personally I keep this all the way down to zero. Um, the higher you have this, obviously, the more blood is going to be coming out of enemies. Uh, it says it's a low GPU impact, but I find it can cause uh, frame rate stutters. So I don't need it. But if you like it, you know, go for it. Personally, I keep it down to zero. Now we get into the big stuff, lighting. Lighting is probably the most resource intensive section that you have here. So the first thing, local light and shadow quality, as you can see, medium GPU impact, high CPU impact, geez, 
Um, all this does is affect the light and the shadows emitted from like torches and lanterns. Very small, hardly noticeable effect, but a ton of impact. Go ahead and keep it off. You don't need it. Sun shadows are kind of fun. Um, pretty hot, pretty resource intensive here. Again, like local light and shadow quality. Sun shadows are medium and high. So sometimes, because I know I can run it, I like to keep it at low. I don't go too high with this one. And if I put it to low, you can see right away there's shadows all over the place. Sun shadows affects the shadows from like structures and games, buildings and trees and stuff like that. Um, I think it adds a lot of depth to the world, but it does cost performance. So if you find after this settings tutorial is done that you just need a little bit more bump of, of performance, I'd say turn the sun shadows down. But for now, we're going to leave it at low. Max shadow casting lights is a setting that strictly affects local light and shadow quality. And since we have it off, we can turn it all the way down to one. That's uh, not really going to play a role for us. Volumetric fog quality is another high one for the GPU. This is a pretty minimal effect. Only a couple maps like Convocation of Decay and I think Braxenburgo, a couple others, have fog effects. Personally, I just keep it at the lowest. I don't need a whole lot of fog, but if you want to pretty up your game a little bit, go ahead and put it to medium. So what ambient light quality does is it adds darkness to areas that don't normally get it. It's kind of a strange uh, setting, and it only affects certain maps, like there's some parts on skittergated effects. Uh, but the big one is hunger in the darkness. If you have it on, it's a lot harder to see. And this is actually a pretty resource intensive setting here. I know it doesn't say it, but it is kind of a fairly significant thing for your GPU. Best bet is just to leave it at low, as it is not that noticeable in the first place. Auto exposure speed doesn't really have an impact at all, but I like to keep it at two because it can just make light change really quickly which helps a lot on that end part of Convocation of Decay. It allows you not to be as blinded uh, by the slow changing light. It's just kind of a quick pop of the light. So I keep that at two. They came out with this new setting, AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0. Go ahead and switch this off and performance. You don't need it. For your anti-aliasing, I like pretty, so I go for TAA. As you can see, this immediately turns on when you put TAA on, as it is a anti-aliasing setting. You still don't need it, trust me. Sharpness is one of those things that, uh, you know, is kind of a lie. It says low GPU impact, but it's fairly significant, honestly. Um, so there are some third-party options you can do for sharpness. Uh, reshade comes to mind. Uh, they have a different bunch of different like shader packs and stuff like that. Totally free to use. But uh, and I've messed around with that. I, I don't really like it as much. I personally find that it's just easier just to run the sharpness on. So go ahead and put that on because TAA without the sharpness, you can see how blurry that looks. And then when we put it back on. That's a lot clearer. So it takes some impact, but it makes our game look much nicer. SSAO is fairly intensive for the GPU. And personally, I don't think it's worth running at all unless you're gonna run it on high or extreme, obviously. On high, it applies like some nice dark spots in areas to give the illusion of like depth, you know? If I flip SSAO to medium, as you can see, just something as simple as the little uh, dark spots on this rock to indicate like little shadows and stuff, it's just completely gone. You know, having it on medium, you still use a lot of your GPU resource, but you just don't get the visual effect. So. Unless you're willing to run it on high, I wouldn't run it at all. Next up we have Bloom, and Bloom just kind of affects uh, light quality, mainly from Sienna's weapons and, and her fire effects. Having it off 
um, isn't really a great help to performance. It'll help a little bit, but it'll make her fire look kind of white and just kind of ugly in my opinion. So you can go ahead and keep this one on. It's not a big deal. Skin shading, depth of field, screen space reflections, all of these can be left off. Depth of field is a pretty uh, intensive GPU strain. Skin shading is almost as much, and screen space reflection, again, quite high usage for the GPU. And they all provide nice effects to look at, but nothing you need to see, nothing you're going to notice a whole lot. Light shafts don't use too much, and they look nice, especially on maps that are dark, I think, with the like moonlight coming through, so you can go ahead and leave that on, that's pretty cool. Lens flare doesn't use that much either, but I personally find this effect kind of annoying, because if you like look into the sun, there'll be a big glare spot on your screen, so up to you. If you like the effect, go ahead and put it on, doesn't use too much, I'm personally going to leave it off. And then color and lens distortion, you could leave it on, I don't personally like it, so I'm going to leave it off. And the motion blur is an absolute cancerous setting that you don't want on, as it will give you motion sickness every time you turn. Hate motion blur. It's bad. Don't use it. And then down here, physics debris, not a necessary setting. Go ahead and turn that off. As you can see, medium CPU impact. So that is, um, you know, pretty significant. And then animation LOD distance, not a ton of usage. So you can put it up to one if you want. Um, but I keep it off. And if you follow these settings, your game should look something like this. Nice, crisp, and clear. Uh, shadows from structures. Little light shaft peeking through. That's so pretty. Detail in your weapons and your character skin. Kruber's talking a lot. So do I, Kruber. Yes, as you can see... Pretty decent detail on the enemies. I'm running this all on a 2060 Super and a 3700X CPU at about 80, 90 frames a second with no dips. So yeah, guys, that's it for me. If this settings tutorial helped you in any way, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like the video, please leave a like. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. And I also have a Discord. Link is in the description down below. Feel free to join us. Later, guys.